Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt. It's called Simplicity. It's from Cozy Quilt Designs and it's one I've been wanting to make for quite some time now. We're in the shipping department and I've got all my patterns in cabinets over here. I believe they're all in alphabetical order. So let's take a look and see if we can find it. Let's see, should be here. O -M. There's Simplicity 2, we've already done that one. And here is today's pattern. This is a pattern by Daniela Stout, and it's a jelly roll pattern. It has lots of sizes, but I'm gonna make the throw size today. So we're gonna need a jelly roll with prints, and then we're gonna need a background, but instead of using yardage for the background, we can use a jelly roll for the background too. So we're going to need 36 strips of each, 36 print, 36 background. And since jelly rolls are my favorite pre-cut, we have a lot of them. So let's find something fun that will look good in this pattern. Now the pattern cover, has a quilt pictured in really nice earth tones. It's very pretty, but I usually like to try something different. So this would give us much the same look as the pattern. But this one here, that's brighter. That'll be nice. We could try it in all blues. That'll give a different look. Now I think this pattern might look good in floral prints. And I've got a lot of jelly rolls from Moda that have nice flowers in them. This is one I've been looking at. This is one called Storytime from American Jane. It's got bright colors and a lot of different colors, and I think that will look really nice in the simplicity pattern. Now for my background, I really want to use a solid because the prints in my jelly roll, they all have a lot going on, and I think a solid will make the pattern look a lot better. So I could use black. They would all stand out against a black but I really think white is gonna look a lot better. So I'm gonna use this nice white set from Hoffman Fabrics. That'll look really good. So the first step is to open this up and pick out the 36 strips that I'm going to use. Now, all of these are nice, all of them will work, but I want to make sure that the ones I use have enough contrast in color between this and the background. So I'm gonna for sure take out these really light ones. So there's two there, and I might take out one of the yellows, and then all our blocks will look really nice with this white background. Here are the 36 strips that I'm going to use. And I'm going to take two of the background strips and two of the colored strips over to the sewing machine. So we're gonna use these to make two strip units. So I'm going to put the background strip down first. And then I'm going to put the printed strip on the top, line everything up, and stitch down one long side. So when you do this, try to not stretch either one of the strips. So I like to grab it way far away from the needle and then hold it and stitch all the way down. If you're afraid you're going to stretch it, you can pin these together first, but if you just kind of smooth them out, they won't stretch. Now I'm going to finger press the seam with the seam allowances towards the print away from the background. So I'm pulling it open with my hands here and drawing my fingernail or the tip of my finger down that seam. And it really, really does flatten it out pretty, pretty well. So even without ironing, look how flat it's staying. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the second two strips. Now this is also going to get finger pressed 
toward the darker fabric, away from the background. Now, if you want, you could take these over and iron them, but I found that just finger pressing keeps it flat enough to move on to the next step. And the next step is to just put these right sides together. So I've got the background on top of the print and the print on top of the background, and they're exactly the same size. And we are going to stitch these together and make a big tube. When we stitch it on both sides, it's going to make a tube. So let's go down the first side. Once you get to the end, you can just spin it around and go down the other side. Now, of course, your strips may not be the same length. You can see here that background is quite a bit shorter than this one, but that doesn't matter. The strip unit is plenty long enough for us to cut the blocks we need out of it. Now it's a good time to iron this. So I'm gonna put it on my ironing board, make sure I've got it laid nice and flat. And I like to use a dry iron and then some steam. Now we're ready to cut some blocks out of this. To do that, we need something called the strip tube ruler. If you don't have a strip tube ruler, the pattern does give you instructions for cutting without it, but I've found that this is really handy. So we're gonna take it all the way down to the far end here and put the five and a half inch line on your stitching line, not on the raw edge, on the stitching line there and hold it in place firmly get your cutter and cut along both sides of your triangle. Now, because it was stitched on both sides, when we open this up, we're going to have a square here and we're going to take our ruler, turn it around, got to slide down a little bit here. We're going to put the five and a half inch mark again on the stitching line, not on the raw edge. See, there's my stitching line. There's my little ruler there. And now we're gonna cut on this side. And now we have a second block cut from there. So I'm going to continue turning the ruler around and cutting the whole strip unit. Now, sometimes you might find that you have to make a fresh cut. So you don't have to slide this all the way over to your last cut. You might want to move it over here and then you can still cut on this side and this side. There's enough room on the strip tube. You don't have to be that accurate. So you can do fresh cuts every time if you like, but if your angle looks good, if you put it along the edge here and everything is lined up and straight, go ahead and cut and you're going to get a total of eight of these from the strip unit. Now the blocks we got, they're similar, but they're almost opposites. So this one has the big checkered red, and this one has the big printed red. So we've got four of these guys here, these four that were on the top of the strip. We're gonna keep those together, and then these four here that were from the bottom of the strip, we're gonna keep those together. The next step is to iron all these open. So I like to have that big background piece on the bottom and then I kind of peel it open so I can keep this seam nice and straight and I smooth it out a little with my hands and then give it a pressing and if you have any of these little corners here they're called dog ears and it's really nice to trim these off with some scissors to make sure that you don't have any bulk, extra bulk in your corners. Now you might only have one on your block, you might have two, depends on how you cut them. So I'm gonna go ahead and iron all of these up exactly the same way. Again, be careful when you open it because you want it flat, but you don't wanna stretch and distort the block. And these are all bias edges all the way around here. That's why I'm carefully pressing it with my hands, then grabbing the iron. So we're going to be working with these matching groups. I've got four that are exactly the same here. So let's work just with these four and put those aside. To make our block, we're gonna do that floral 
in a chevron shape there. And then we're going to turn these two like that. So the opposite print here is in the middle. So I'm just going to sew all four together. And this is the easiest way for me to do this. I put those two right sides together and those two right sides together. And I'm going to sew down here and leave, leave them attached. So I'm going to just slide it over a little, put this one under the machine first, match up all my edges. And now just slide this one over. Now let's open this one up and we're going to press the seam allowance to the right. Now since these are bias edges along here, you have to be a little careful. You can't finger press it hard like this because you will stretch that seam. So I just kind of smash it a little. Now this one, we want the seam allowance going the opposite way. So again, pull it open and just smash it just a little bit. Where these intersections are, you can press a little bit with your fingernail and that'll help hold them in place. Now, put those right sides together and we'll sew down this edge. Now, when you do these seams here, the seam allowances are all going in opposite directions and it makes it really easy to get those intersections matched perfectly. Now we'll open it up, press that seam to one side, again, being careful you don't stretch. And that's our first block. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the second four blocks. So we make a chevron there, and then we put the opposite fabric in the center. There's the block, we'll stitch it up. So the first two blocks are done. And I'm just going to continue taking two printed strips and two background strips and making blocks with them. Now, I chose to do two reds, two of the same colors. And I'm going to continue doing that throughout all of my strip units so that I will get some red blocks, some blue blocks, some green blocks, some orange blocks. If you like, you can mix them all up and you'll get more of a scrappy look. I just wanted to try doing separate colors for all of my blocks and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, let's see what these look like. The blocks are all stitched up, they're all ironed nice and flat, and every block gets laid out exactly the same way with this white V on the bottom here. And I'm just going to pick blocks at random and I'm not gonna worry about what color goes where right now. I'm just gonna get a nice variety and start laying out the whole quilt. There, I just laid out all the colors at random and it does look very nice, but I think I'd like to try putting the colors in diagonals. There. Now I've got everything in diagonal color stripes. So we've got green all along this line, yellow, red, blue. The whole quilt is like that. And I really think it looks a lot better like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these blocks stitched together and then we'll go and pick out a border. The top is done and we're heading back down to the shipping department to pick out some borders. nice group of fabrics here. It's got the right colors. We've got some red and green. And these have strawberries. I'm not sure they're the perfect, uh, the perfect type of fabric, but they're the perfect color. Um, let's see. Here's a really nice plaid. Now that might, that might make a nice border. You know what? I think that even though the colors on these are good, they're not really the style of print I'm looking for. 
But this section here with all these nice little florals, these would be perfect. And I'm thinking this red with the little daisies, that would make a nice big border. And then I'm gonna see if I can find a solid or almost solid blue for the first inner border. Now, the reason I like to use almost solids is because a flat solid can sometimes just not have anything going on. I like to have a little bit of action. So these fabrics here, these are called thatch. They work like a solid from a distance. They look like a solid, but up close, you can see a little bit of stuff in the background. So I think this provides a lot more interest than just a solid in many quilts. And I think with this one, that's exactly the right blue that we need. I've got the borders on the quilt. It's all loaded on the machine and I need to pick out a thread color for quilting. Any of these will work, but I'm afraid these dark ones will be a little bit stark on that white background. That's really going to show. Now the yellow, that probably won't show too much. That would be a pretty option. And let's see how dark the blue is. I do like the blue. Now, I think it's going to be too dark. Now, I, I almost never quilt with white thread, but I actually think white is going to be our best option. Obviously, it's not going to show in the background. It really doesn't show on the blue very much. Doesn't even show on the red very much. So let's go with the white today. For the quilting pattern, I've chosen one called Emily. It has really nice flowers, nice leaves. Here, you can see it a little better if I give you a few more repeats. That'll be really nice on this quilt. I've got the Simplicity Quilt all done. I'm very happy with how it quilted up. I'm very happy with the patchwork. It's a nice, cheerful looking color combination. So this is very nice. And you can see all those Vs, all the upside down Vs. You see the colors in stripes. And the quilting, like I hoped, is very receded. You can't see it at all. It's just a hint of texture. You can see the flowers. If you look up close, you can see these really nice flowers, which adds a nice detail. Now on the back with that little print, again, just a hint of quilting showing there. So it turned out 74 by 74 inches. So it's a nice big throw size. I had so much fun making it. I made a second quilt. I really wanted to see what this looked like with a dark background instead of a light. So I made this one with a Halloween jelly roll. And I really like how the dark background makes those lighter prints really show up. There's just a big difference between how it looks with the dark compared to the original with the light background. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, before we go, we're going to have a giveaway. This is a quilt called Hip to be Square. You may have seen us do this in a video. I did it in gray tones, but this is a nice, happy, cheerful blank, uh, picnic size blanket. This is all done with Moda fabrics and it's got a nice swirly pattern for the quilting and it shows up quite nicely on the back because we've got the blue thread there. It's very, very easy to enter the giveaway. All you do is click the link right below the video that says giveaway. Put in your name and your email address and we can send this quilt to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.